Can you say something about taking love from others and giving love in relation to the chakra? Yeah. So love is predominantly the heart area, although love can also be connected to the solar plexus. Like it's, it's not as fixed as I make it sound. And there's a lot more complexity to the chakras than what I make it out to be. But um, um, so there's also this love in, um, in the sacral chakra. This is a grounded love and a spacious love. Uh, it's a it's a very still love and it's very like empty in a way and grounding. And then there's the love in the heart chakra. So let me just go into the psychology of the heart chakra. So in the heart chakra, the psychology is on the positive side. The feelings are feeling loved, feeling accepted by the group, feeling that you have something to give, some something to offer that um, that you're worthy, that you're appreciated, that you're seen. And then on the negative, it's feeling unloved, you're not lovable, you're not part of the group, you're not seen, that you could be abandoned, that you could be chucked out of the group, that you're lonely, that you have nothing to give. And so that's the positive and that's the negative. And then what happens from that is there's two ways in which you can respond to the negative. You can have excessive energy or deficient energy. So excessive energy is where you're like a love addict in a way, and you're constantly looking for validation all the time from people, like a panting dog, like, <laughs> you know, those people that are so excited by social interactions and what people think, and maybe you excessively... Um, try to get attention through power or success or a beautiful home on the way that you look. And it's, it's very needy energy. You're always trying to get love from people. So you're not giving love to people, you're taking love from people, but it's, it's very excessive. Um, and then when it's deficient, it's uh, people that, um, that feel this all the time, so they, then they become reclusive. So rather than they're excessively trying to validate it, they become reclusive and they, their personality is to hide away from other people, to almost in a way like live by themselves, like almost, almost like self-prophecy, so living by themselves, um, being contented, in a way being contented by themselves, but they're not really contented by themselves, they're just cut off and shut off to love. They reject people, um, they're loners, they push people away, um, they don't give people a tissue, Tension, they don't participate. Um, there's social anxiety sometimes. So these two different um, dynamics. And people can go to either one. It's not like you're one or the other. You can go and you can be like the spectrum in between, like jumping from one to the other. Um, and it's just recognizing that. It really is just recognition. And it's not that any of them are bad. Like I'm, I, I'm an introvert and I tend to veer. Like today, my mom, my mom just went to a random party. My mom is really extrovert. And she just went to a random party by herself. Um, she knows this person from dog walking and somebody was having a party in a house near her and she just went to the party by herself. And I was like, mom, that's really amazing. Like, it's so great that you can just go out and go to parties by yourself like that and then just go and talk to complete strangers. She knew one lady vaguely from just walking and the lady said, why don't you come? And she just went, not because of social obligation, but because she wanted to. And she was like, well, I had a nice dress on, so I felt good about myself and... She just goes in there and I know her from, I hope my mom doesn't mind me using her as an example. I know her from like growing up, like she's, she's just really good at socializing and it's really important to her. Whereas I take after more my dad's side of the family and 
I'm more reluctant to socialize. I um, maybe come across as super social because I am actually triple Gemini. So I love teaching and I love talking about things I'm passionate about. And I love writing and books and stories and all these sorts of things. But I'm actually an introvert. And um, and like once in my town, I was invited to a party by myself. And, I, and in the end, I just cancelled because like, that's really not my thing to go to a party by myself and to meet lots of new people. That's more of a horror show for me. It's not a horror show, but it's really not something that I want to do. Even if I went with someone, I don't think it'd be something I want to do. So, and that comes from the heart area. Like I can feel it in the heart area when someone has this expectation on me. It's like, I don't want to it. And the no comes from that feeling there. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just when you identify with it, um, and and you really think that your happiness is based on it, then that's when there's too much energy put into it. So that's when it becomes like negative or self-destructive because you think that you have to be by yourself or your life has to look a certain way in order for you to be happy, where actually your happiness is right here. Right here. And I know that you wanted me to talk about taking energy in particular. So let me move on to taking energy. So when you are identified with these feelings, so know there's a certain amount of natural feelings. Like I'm not trying to tell you that your feelings are bad or wrong or anything but when you identify with it then it can get excessive so someone can have such social anxiety that they can't speak to people they can't go to I'm so sorry that I burp um, when I'm talking I, I think it's because I take in a lot of air from talking so much um, it's just a sound to you guys, though. If you can get over the social disgust by it, it's just a sound. It's not like you have to breathe in the smell as well. Khaleesi, however, she sat there having to take the smell of it. Um, of course, my burps don't smell. <laughs> um, so what were they saying? The, um, so yeah, the social anxiety where you just can't go to play, you can't, you like, you become a bit of a hermit, you don't go out, you dread going to things, you have lots of anxiety if you do do things, you get more and more introverted, your life becomes handicapped by it, in a way. Um, and... Um, And then the excessive one is that you're constantly trying to get love and approval from, from people. And that's exhausting. I don't know if you've ever been around people that are always trying to get love and approval from you. It's actually exhausting being with somebody like that because they're always asking for validation. It happens, um, I've had it a lot in the last 10 years. There's so, not all the time. There's so many people that are really cool and really balanced about things, but um, because of the whole non-duality teaching, I sometimes get people that really want love from me and approval from me. It's like they haven't had it from their parents or they, they haven't had it from society. And then they really appreciate the way I speak and they really appreciate what I do. And then they really want me to validate them. And it'd be great if I could just like kiss them on the head and one time and I'm like, you are validated and that's it. But what happens is it's like all the time and it becomes exhausting forming a relationship with somebody that constantly wants love from you. If your partner's like that, if you form love relationships like that, it's very exhausting because it's actually a taking energy from the person that's doing it. It's not a giving energy. It's quite, it's kind of ironic because when I meet these people that are always trying to like get love from me, um, like like deep down they really appreciate what they want that what I do and they want to show that appreciation um but actually what they're doing is they take they're taking from me by trying to get my love and attention and affection um and it's actually the opposite of what they want to do what they want is to like show appreciation and it's and it's not something i can teach you it's an energetic thing like when you appreciate someone for what they do, it's like appreciating them, but not needing that to um, 
to own that in some way. It's hard to put into words, but you can put it into so many different circumstances if you've got kids and you've got a very needy kid, um, like an unbalanced needy kid. It's exhausting to, to be around. And it's something you should really address if you've got a needy kid because what actually happens to people that really are needing a lot of love and attention from people, they actually end up as rejected all their life. And then it makes them worse. I have a relation who I've grown up with and I've watched it throughout my life, who's always looking for love from people and he, they're constantly rejected. It's so painful to watch and they can't see it. So they, they grow over time, you know, thinking that other people are assholes. And then also like other people take advantage of them as well. Like it's sad. You see people taking advantage of them, like desperate for love, always wanting to mow their lawn or help them out in some way in order to get attention. And really, in the ultimate, what you want is this moment. And your chakra is just meant to be a beacon in order to, to deal with day-to-day -day life. Like telling you what your preferences are or what you don't like. But when you've got like an excessive energy there, then it's like coming back to that feeling. So if you can catch the anxiety, which it is anxiety, but it feels good. So if you're going to someone for attention, in that moment of going to someone for attention, it's got anxiety in it, but it also feels good because there's hope and there's possibility that you're going to be finally validated. But if you can catch it and just go into that feeling and see that feeling and allow it to be there and recognize it in the heart, and then stay with it for a period of time and then begin to ask what it wants. And then it's like, I want everyone to love me. I want to be super popular. I want to be appreciated. And letting that feeling grow in your heart rather than actually trying to force it happen in, in the external world. And the more that you let it grow in your heart and your chakra balances, the more actually people will just naturally come to you and appreciate you. So you use that exercise to go to what it is that you want in the positive to help bring your chakra out of that negativity. And then it's all about coming back to balance. And that's very attractive, somebody with more balanced chakras that isn't always like, eh, eh, give me attention, or oh, stay away, stay away, stay away, stay away, stay away, stay away. In my identification, mine was definitely back off, back off, back off, back off, back off. Um, yeah, even though I can be super social, it was the, I'm, all, I'm also like it now, also my English upbreaking, upbreaking, upbringing, I could, you could call it an upbreaking, like breaking in a horse, I was broken into English, um, upbringing, there's also, um, like I'm very reserved with people, except the people that uh, I'm intimate with, like my partner. Reserved. Okay, thank you for your question.